when we practice mindfulness, it comes in two stages. The first is simply the stage of establishing a frame of reference, as when we stay with the breath. That's the body and the body, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world, which means that any other topic that comes up in the mind, we're not going to go there. We're going to stay right with the breath. Once that frame of reference is established, the next step of the Buddha said is to be aware of origination and passing away. Now, sometimes you hear that translated as arising and passing away, but it's not, that's not what the Buddha said. You know, origination means causation, seeing what the causes are for things to arise in the mind, which is very different from simply watching things arise. Because the way you know the causes, of course, is to try to manipulate them. It's like being a scientist. Scientists don't simply watch animals or watch min minerals. They experiment. They change things here, change things there, put this chemical together with the mineral, that chemical together with the mineral. And by changing the causes, they see which causes have an impact, which ones don't, and those that do have an impact, what kind of impact it has. Or you can make a comparison with building a building. Back when I was at Wadama City, there was one time when I came back to America and John Fuhan came along. And he noticed in my house that my father was an amateur carpenter, a good one. And so we got back to Thailand. He said, okay, the father's a carpenter, the son should be a carpenter. He gave him the task of building a place to dye robes, a little hut. Had a roof and a little stove inside, all handmade. And one of the instructions was okay, not to buy anything new, but to use old scraps that were already there at the monastery. If I had to buy anything new, I had to get special permission. But what it meant, of course, was I had to understand suddenly how, how to make a roof, how the rafters fit together when you put a roof together. I'd seen them many times, but never really paid close attention. But now that I had to build something, I had to pay close attention. When other people build roofs, how did they do that? When they put up a wall of concrete blocks, how did they do that? And it was by having to build something that I get, learned a lot more about wood and a lot more about buildings. I had used buildings many times before, but never really looked into the, the details of their construction. But once I was forced to, I came away with a lot more knowledge. Well, it's the same with the mind. When you're trying to put together a state of concentration, you have to figure out, well, what are the causes and what are the effects? And John Lee has already given some advice. He says, when you're trying to get it in the mind of the concentration, direct a thought and evaluation, singleness and preoccupation. These are the causes. Direct a thought is when you focus on a topic, like when you establish mindfulness. But then evaluation is the next step. If you're trying to do this well, which is part of ardency, which is also in mindfulness practice, you're trying to develop a sense of ease in the body. Well, what kind of breathing will do that? Your experiment. When you find a rhythm and texture of breathing that feels good, what do you do with it then? You try to maintain it. But what happens if the body changes? Well, you change the breathing. And then the Buddha says to let that sense of ease and refreshment spread throughout the body. How do you do that? Again, John Lee gives some advice based on his experience about letting it spread through the body. But how do you let it spread through the body? That's something you have to figure out for yourself. You get a sense of when you're pushing too much. You get a sense of when all you have to do is simply think in the mind, let it spread. Think of the channels in the body through which it could spread. And that way you learn a lot about cause and effect, both in the body and the mind. How your perceptions play a role in shaping the way you experience the body, which kind of perceptions are useful, which ones are not. And that's how you learn about origination, cause and effect. As John Lee once said, if you know causes without knowing the effects, that's not discernment. If you know effects without knowing the causes, that's not the discernment. You have to know the two together, and the best way to know that, of course, is to make sure the causes come from within. Those are the ones you know most clearly. 
because you should know what you're doing. That's what alertness is all about. In this way, as you put together a state of concentration of the mind, you learn an awful lot about the mind. All the processes of fabrication, how things get put together in the mind. It's when you try to build a state of concentration that you really get to know these things. Otherwise, they just pass, pass, pass by your eyes. You see them, but you don't really see them. There are potentials there that you miss because you haven't tried to develop them. So in the stage of origination and passing away, as you focus on the breath, this is what it means, trying to create a state of concentration, learning what works, what doesn't work. So you can see how a state of becoming gets formed in the mind. The same applies for distractions. You can simply follow the distractions. But again, you don't really know them that well. It's when you fight against them. That's when you know them. Or as the Buddha said, if you want to know somebody's purity, have dealings with them. Sometimes that means getting in arguments with them, arguments with them. and see how they behave during an argument. Do they behave in an honorable way? If you just go along, go along with whatever they say, you're never going to really know. But when you actually have dealings with them, that you want to make sure that you don't lose out to them and they, they don't abuse you. Of course, you don't abuse them. Then see how they behave. It's the same with your defilements, your dis distractions as you meditate, those thoughts of greed and distress with reference to the world. You're going to know those only if you say no to them. And try to say no more and more quickly. And you begin to see how these things form in the mind, what stages they go through. And that way you become less and less vulnerable to them. So you don't simply watch things come and go. You try to make good things come and make them stay. This is what the Buddha said is meant by mindfulness as a governing principle. And here we try to give rise to concentration and make it stay. That's how mindfulness and concentration go together to produce discernment. The kind of discernment that can really <coughs> that can lead to release.